In this video, I'm going to show you how to make the most delicious profiteroles. Profiteroles are made from choux pastry or pâté choux, and it's a light pastry dough that's used in many pastries. Instead of using a raising agent, it employs high moisture content to create steam during cooking to puff up the pastry. Start this off by placing a large saucepan onto your stovetop and placing it onto a medium heat. To make the choux pastry, add in 100 grams or 3.5 ounces of unsalted butter and allow it to melt. Add in 1 cup or 250 milliliters of water and bring this to a low simmer. Place over a sieve and add in 1 cup or 150 grams of plain flour and sift this through to remove any lumps. Using either a spatula or a wooden spoon, mix this all together to form a nice smooth pastry. And whilst you're mixing, you'll notice that it will really start to thicken up. Keep mixing till it becomes really smooth and no longer sticks to the saucepan. Then set aside and allow to cool down for 10 minutes. Preheat your oven to 200 degrees Celsius or 390 degrees Fahrenheit. Then once cooled, add one room temperature free range egg into the pastry at a time and mix thoroughly. The pastry will start to essentially split, but it will come back together when the eggs are fully mixed through. Then continue the process with the remaining three eggs. Then once that's done, you should be left with a nice thick and smooth shoe pastry. With a piping bag and a 15 millimeter smooth and round nozzle, Place the nozzle into the piping bag and push through until it's nice and tight at the bottom. Fold the top of the bag around your hand, then add in the choux pastry. Squeeze it tight to remove any air pockets. Then on a baking tray lined out with parchment paper, pipe out two tablespoon blobs, two to three centimeters apart. And you will have to do this with multiple trays or one tray at a time. With a wet finger, dab the top of the pastry to push down the peak. This will avoid burning and result in even color all over. Place these into the oven and we're going to bake these for 17 minutes. Take these out of the oven and reduce the oven temperature to 160 degrees Celsius or 320 degrees Fahrenheit. These have nicely risen and have great color. With a knife, we're just going to pierce the bottom of these to allow any steam to escape and this will allow them to dry out in the centre and to avoid deflation. Place them back into the reduced temperature oven and bake for a further 7 minutes. Then after the final 7 minutes, we're going to transfer them to a wire rack to completely cool down. Whilst the pastry is cooling, in a small saucepan add 200 grams or 7 ounces of dark chocolate along with 3 quarters of a cup or 175 milliliters of full fat cream. Place it onto a medium heat and mix it all together. Mixing it frequently allow the chocolate to completely melt and this will take roughly 2-3 to three minutes. Once it's nice and smooth just pop it aside to cool down. Here is one vanilla pot and with a paring knife we are going to slice this open lengthways to reveal its delicious seeds. Using your knife, scrape the inside of the pod to remove any seeds, making sure not to waste any. Then repeat with the other half. Then with the pods, most recipes would add these in for increased flavour, but as we're whipping cream, it's not ideal. You can dry these out and grind them up with sugar and create a delicious vanilla sugar. Add the seeds to a mixing bowl, and if you're not going to be using fresh vanilla, you can substitute this for 1.5 teaspoons or 2.4 millilitres of vanilla extract. Add in 1 cup or 250 millilitres of full fat cream, and 40 grams or 1.4 ounces of caster sugar. Using a whisk, a hand mixer or a stand mixer, whip up the cream to stiff peaks. Then again with a piping bag and a 2.5 to 3 mm smooth nozzle, set it up as we did before and add the cream mixture. And this cream is called Chantilly cream. Give it a tight squeeze to remove any air. Then using the pierced hole in the bottom of the pastries, pipe in the Chantilly cream until you feel resistance. Then repeat the process for the rest of them. Now the profiteroles are nearly done and the center should look like this. 
place the cooling rack back over the tray with the parchment paper and this will reduce mess. Then spoon over that delicious chocolate ganache. And if you don't want to spoon it over, you can just dip the profiteroles into the chocolate. Pop them ones aside. And if you want to be fancy, you can serve it up as a little tower and drizzle that perfectly smooth chocolate sauce over the top. This looks absolutely amazing. Let's give this small pastry a try on my excessively large plate. That shoe pastry is fantastic. It's fluffy, smooth, not too sweet, and the chocolate partners perfectly with the cream to create one delicious dessert. This recipe makes 20 to 25 profiteroles depending on your piping size. If you're not going to make these all at once or if you're making them for a large gathering, these can be placed in the freezer without any of the cream or chocolate in them for up to three months. Just remove them from the freezer when you're ready to use them, allow them to slightly defrost, then make some fresh chocolate ganache and cream. If you're going to fully make them all, these can be kept in the fridge for up to three days. This is a must try recipe, please enjoy.